Hey everybody, Mark here with Car Audio Fabrication. In this video, I'm coming at you with a vlog style build log update for the project that I'm currently working on. Just to bring you up to speed really quick, on this project, we're doing a full three-way component set up front, and we're also doing a rear set of coaxial speakers, along with, of course, amplifiers and subwoofers. Now, in the front of the vehicle, we're installing the six and a half inch woofer, and the vehicle's factory speaker is a six by nine. So we, of course, need a way to adapt to this six by nine size for that six and a half inch speaker and to do that we're going to be making some custom 3d printed speaker adapters now in the rear of the vehicle we're installing that six and a half inch coaxial speaker and the factory speaker size in the rear door is six and a half inches but we still want an aftermarket adapter so we're also going to be making these so coming up we're going to be talking about the design process of making these how we can add threads to them so that we can install speakers and just some general tips and tricks that you're going to want to use if you also intend to use a 3D printer to make your own custom adapters. Now really quick before we start talking about the design process of making these along with the printing process, I do want to show you guys the six and a half inch coaxials that we're going to be using in the rear doors because I didn't have these on hand quite yet when I did my previous video showing you guys all the gear that we're using for this build. So this is the Flex Evo PC 165 FE two-way coaxial kit. So if we open this up and remove these protective covers here, let's take a closer look. These have a butyl suspension with the tuned mass damper design which allows for enhanced control and more neutral linear sound. The flax cone is very light yet stiff which helps avoid coloration and makes the driver more dynamic. The basket of the driver is aluminum, allowing for a rigid design. And the inverted dome coaxial tweeter here is a unique design as well. It's what's called the M profile, which allows for better definition without directivity. If you guys want to learn more about these, check out the link down in the video description. And a special thanks to Focal America for sponsoring this video. So before we could start the printing process here, we of course had to come up with a design. And for that, I removed the factory speaker out of the vehicle. You guys saw that just a minute ago. Here it is right here. Now also for my design process, I happen to have some existing aftermarket speaker adapters on hand for the rear doors, so I grabbed this as well. Now you may be wondering, if I already have the aftermarket speaker adapters, why not just use these? Well, I'm going to show you. You'll see that these have these existing mounting holes in them that would allow you to install a speaker. Obviously these mounting holes on the outside bolt to the vehicle and those are correct. But if we take our coaxial speaker here, we put it inside the ring and I'm going to carefully line up one of those mounting holes. You can see the light passing through right there. This is kind of hard to do with only one hand, but you can see it's lined up. Let's go ahead and look at the other side here. And if you look closely, I'll zoom in there, you can see that that hole does not line up with our speaker slot. I could probably make it work and get away with using some of these coarse thread screws at a slight angle or maybe even making my own new holes in the aftermarket adapter, but I'd rather just have an adapter that has a hole pattern that matches up perfectly. So this is one of our finished adapters right here that we're going to be making. And I'm gonna show you guys later in the video how we add these threaded inserts into the adapter as well. This one doesn't have them yet. By doing that, we'll be able to use these machine screws instead to hold the speakers in position. So let's go talk about the design process. All right guys, so here we are at our design station and first we want to design our adapter for our six by nine to six and a half inch component. For this process, we're gonna be using Fusion 360 and I like to show you guys a finished product first, that way you know what we're working towards. Just a quick explanation of everything here. We of course have the surface for the six and a half inch speaker itself. We have four holes. Those are going to be for the threaded inserts that we're going to add to the adapter. We then have the mounting flange and that of course matches the shape of the the OEM speaker. That mounting flange of course incorporates four mounting holes which are in the same position allowing it to bolt into the door speaker location and I've also added an additional hole here that's going to be a pass-through hole just because the way the speaker wiring is routed on this vehicle it's routed on the front side of the speaker because normally the adapter plugs in to here on the speaker so instead we obviously need to get that wire to the back side of the speaker in our application 
so it's going to be routed in front but I've given myself a pass through hole that's going to come through on the back side and you can also see since the flange on this is relatively large in relation to the speaker size I have added some of these ribs that are for structural support that are going to keep that mounting flange nice and rigid and strong to begin the design process I take a picture of the factory speaker and this is going to serve as a canvas that will allow me to make my initial shaped sketch of that main mounting flange so here's my first sketch that I've created here and you can see that we pick up the outside shape this is kind of a slot combined with these added wings and I've also incorporated the same mounting hole locations now while I'm going through this sketching process, I'm able to take different measurements using my calipers here. As an example, I can measure the center to center distance of these mounting holes. In this case, that was 3.7 inches from here to here. So I'm able to make sure that all these dimensions are accurate and match up correctly with my scaled picture within the drawing. From here, based upon that first initial sketch, I create an extrusion, and this is about 3 16 of an inch thick, which is going to be that main mounting plate, obviously, that mounts to the door. Now, my next sketch that I'm going to create, this is more based upon the dimensions of the aftermarket speaker. Again, it's advantageous to take the actual physical speaker itself, if you have it, and take measurements with a caliper, or if the owner's manual has proper dimensions, we can resort to using those as well. In this case here, the main things I wanted to pay attention to were of course the cutout size for the speaker to pass through, in this case, 143.6 millimeters. I also wanna pay attention to the overall outside dimension, in this case, 165 millimeters. I wanna make sure that my mounting flange is large enough for that. It could be slightly oversized if need be. And I also wanna pay attention to this bolt center diameter. In this case, this is 155.5 millimeters from the center of this whole slot to the center of this whole slot here. So by knowing those values, I've got my inner cutout size, I've got my outer flange, and also the bolt center diameter. Based upon that sketch, I'm able to create another new extrusion, in this case, extruding out that profile. And these holes here are sized to accept that threaded insert that we're going to be heat pressing into the adapter later. Now from here, we obviously want to make sure that there's not material on the inside of the speaker hole there so we are going to cut that out and next I wanted to add a sketch here that is going to allow us to add our first rib that is going to be part of that stiffening profile that we talked about here on the design once I've added that sketch in and extruded the first one we can do what's called a circular pattern and we're going to create the rest of those now from here there's some finished features that I always like to make sure I add some different roundovers in some of the corners this adds strength you generally want to avoid having hard 90 degree corners on parts having a roundover in the corner not only gives it a more finished look but also does strengthen the part so i've added roundovers in all those corners around all of the ribs and also around the outside profile just to give it more of a finished feel finally if you remember i mentioned i wanted to add a pass-through hole that allows our wiring to go through and we'll be able to fill that up with some butyl rubber to avoid air leaking through the hole but I've added that there as well and then one more final round over around this top edge corner so overall here is our front speaker adapter and I know that I'm breezing through these steps really quickly the program that I'm using here is called fusion 360 if you guys would like to see me do a much more in-depth tutorial where I'm actually going through creating all of these features step by step it'd be a really long tutorial but if you'd like to see that be sure to let me know now here's our rear door speaker adapter and I think we can go through this pretty quickly on this one I took a slightly different approach I took some graph paper and I took my aftermarket speaker adapter I could have also used the OEM speaker but I basically traced the outside profile and I traced the mounting holes those are the main things that I want to pick up with my design and once again I was able to scale this picture here and add my initial sketch that picks up the outside diameter you'll notice that on that aftermarket speaker adapter it has these little tabs and I wasn't too concerned about having those because I took a look at the actual design in the vehicle itself and there's really no reason that I have to have these tabs there's no clearance issues or anything so I just added an overall shape here an overall circular shape so again we started with that initial mounting flange that picks up the three hole locations from there we then extruded the inside part here and let me hide that background picture so you can see a little bit better 
but we extruded the actual mounting flange for the speaker itself. And do notice that I did take these cuts out here. And that is important because these particular fasteners in the vehicle have a large washer kind of attached to them. We wanna make sure that we have enough clearance for that. So I've added those there. And from there, I can once again add the hole locations. Again, those hole locations are based upon the same bolt center that we got from the dimensions of our aftermarket speaker. And once again, we can add round over corners to give ourselves a little bit more strength and a nice finish appeal on the outside edges there. Finally, I also wanted to have a pass through hole for my speaker wiring on this because once again, it comes through from the front side. So I've given myself that hole right there. So now that we have our design done, let's talk about how we take that design and go into a 3D printed part. In my modeling software here, I'm going to want to find the body that I've made and I'm going to right click here. And what I can do is save this as a mesh file. So that's going to give me a file type that I can export and I can bring into what is called my slicer program. A slicer program basically looks at a 3D model and it determines a way that it's going to actually create that part based upon slices of material. In our case here, I'm using a Bamboo Lab X1C. So the Bamboo Lab 3D printers have a software that you can use with them that is their own slicer. And these have a ton of different features that we can control to change the different parameters of how we're printing. But for the most part, things are relatively easy and kind of set up for us already based upon the 3D printing material that we're going to be using, which in this case, we're going to be using ABS to make these adapter plates. Now you can see that I've imported my 3D model here into the slicer program, and this would be a very weird orientation to print this adapter in. Typically, we're going to want to start with printing on this bottom face, so we're gonna orient that to the build plate. Now you can see here that it's giving us a warning that the model is too large for the build plate, so we need to figure out a way to get around this. What we could actually do is if we click the model here, we can do a rotation, and let's rotate our Z axis by 45 degrees there and you can see that if we accept that that now we no longer have any sort of warning and you can also see that we fit within the confines of our build plate there and let's do a quick arrange just to make sure that we're out of the way of some of the flow calibration lines and stuff that this printer uses in order to start printing. So now we need to tell the slicer program a few different things. We need to tell it what plate type we're using. In this case, I'm using an engineering plate since I'm going to be printing with ABS materials. You can see that the slicer program here has several different presets that we can use. I've found this strength option to work really well. With this strength option, it adds far more internal and external walls, and I'll show you what I mean by that in just a second. Let's go ahead and slice this plate. Again, there are a lot of different configurations and features that we can change here. But by doing the slice plate there, the program runs through and it takes our 3D model and it determines how it's actually going to make it. So with this strength profile, if you take a look at those yellow and orange lines right there. These are all of the external walls and you can see that since we went with that strength profile, I believe there's six of them. One, two, three, four, five, six total walls. So you can see that these ribs on the outside that we've added, those are going to be solid, which is going to make this good and strong. Now you might be wondering why not just completely print these solid as is? Well, one, you would use far more materials. Two, you would require far more printing time to make each of these layers solid. But three, you don't necessarily need to have solid layers to get a ton of strength out of this part by having the outer profiles nice and solid. And then obviously the top face here and the bottom face, a couple of layers thick, is going to add more than enough strength, especially with all of this infill tying everything together. You're going to end up with a very, very strong part. So again, here by using the program, we can literally go through each of these layers and see exactly what the G code is going to be telling the machine machine to do. It's going to build our part layer by layer all the way up to the top. So now what I can do is essentially export this G code. I can send it to the machine and start our print, but there are a few things that we need to do to start getting ready for that process. Now it depends on your machine and the build plate and the material that you plan on printing with, but for my application here, I found that it's helpful to use this glue stick 
on the build plate to make sure that we get good adhesion of the material to the plate. Once I've done that prep work, I get the plate loaded into the machine and simply hit start on our print. Now we can watch a quick time lapse of these printing on the front door adapters. It took about four hours and 16 minutes and on the rear adapters, it took about three hours and three minutes. Once our machine is complete, we can open it up here. Let's pull out the build plate. A quick side note here, just in case you are curious, on this 3D printer, it prints these extrusion lines here before it starts. And the reason it does that is it has a little LiDAR camera that it uses and it scans those and it's actually calibrating the flow of the material before it actually starts the printing process. That just allows you to get a much better print. In my experience, these machines work really, really well. So I've removed that, we can just discard that. And there's also these lines here. These are for priming the extruder before it starts printing get those out of the way as well so here it is guys we can flex this build plate and the part will pop off these adapters are super strong now that i have a nice finished adapter we're going to add those heat set inserts to give ourselves a threaded hole for each of our machine fasteners to hold the speaker to the adapter now i'm going to actually show you guys this in just a second but a quick tip for you guys something that i found works really well is to take a piece of metal in this case i'm just using this metal ruler you could also use something like a putty knife and we're going to use this to actually set the heat set insert the rest of the way down into the material. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm going to turn on the soldering iron, I'm gonna make sure that's nice and straight, and I'm gonna melt it about 98% of the way down in. I'm just going to leave it just a little bit over the top of the surface, and then using my metal ruler, I'm gonna push it the rest of the way down in while it's still good and hot, and kind of make everything nice and flush. Here's what it looks like now that we've added those heat set inserts into the material and I do find that a lot of times when you heat it in a little bit of the molten plastic has a tendency to get inside of the threads there so it's usually a good idea to kind of chase the threads with a drill and tap kit this is the kit that I always recommend I'll put a link for you guys down in the video description but basically I'm going to carefully drill through here using the proper drill bit size for our 832 threads I'm going to drill out some of that extra plastic that may be in the way and then I'm just going to carefully chase those threads with the proper tap size just to clean everything up nicely now we're almost there it's almost time to mount our speaker to the adapter but one more thing that I want to do is I want to add this phone foam gasketing tape to the surface that is going to be between the speaker and the adapter. By adding this, we ensure that we do not get any air leakage between the adapter and the speaker. If the tape interferes with the threaded insert in any of the locations, I just simply cut out a little notch. Now, once I go to install the assembly into the vehicle, I'll also apply some of that foam tape around the back side of the adapter to properly seal it to the metal of the door itself. But now we can take this and line it up in its correct orientation. I want this through hole down here for the speaker wire at the bottom. So now we can add the quantity of four number eight by 32 screws to each of these speakers to secure them completely into our new custom brackets. And with that, here we have it, my friends, all four drivers ready to go into the vehicle. The two component six and a half inch woofers for up front and the two six and a half inch coaxial flax drivers for in the rear. Now there is a lot more to do on this project. We do need to get the amplifier rack reinstalled. We have to do all of the new speaker wiring since we're wiring up several different speakers. Again, in this case, remember that we're doing an active three-way component set up front. So quite a bit more wiring to do. So if you are new here and you wanna catch the rest of this build along with also making a custom subwoofer enclosure for three 13 inch subwoofers, I'd love to have you as a new subscriber. Now don't forget if you're looking for a set of new speakers for your next car audio build, be sure to check out the Flax Evo lineup from our show sponsor, Focal America. You can learn more at the link down in the video description. A big thanks to them along with Jerry and the rest of the Patreon membership team. And of course, a big thank you to you guys for tuning in and watching.